Hi, guys. This is Mark Hauser. Um, I'm from Property Adjustment National Association. We've been doing public adjusting uh, as an association for over 25 years. And uh, I was a regional vice president for one of the largest firms in the United States and their number one trainer throughout the country. And um, I wanted to introduce you to public adjusting, but first I wanted to show you that uh, uh, we have some, what I call stars that are part of our membership. And um, first star is a gentleman by the name of, uh, well, it's actually a first one would be a woman. Her name is Wakamba Gerard. Uh, she, she was in it for about 10 years in the association and she retired at the ripe old age of 47 with over $6 million. Uh, she actually has a nickname for me. She calls me Papa Bear. And then we have Eric Baker. Now, Eric Baker uh, went to Mexico Beach with 28 of our members. Uh, three of them were actually also part of his company. And it was a major hurricane called Michael. And they went there. And after three and a half months, they had signed up over $25 million in fees for the group. And uh, Eric is just a big giant sized Boy Scout for him. It's either black or white. He doesn't believe in gray. And uh, we have a ton of people that are all across the country. And uh, like I said, 45 states. And um, our people are well-trained to make sure that the American public get what we like to call a righteous outcome. So what is a public adjuster? A public adjuster is somebody who actually has a license by the state to actually represent the insured. We actually take their side, or our fiduciary right is to the insured. The insurance adjusters, their fiduciary right is to the insurance company. And they're not there as your friend. They're there to try to minimize and, and, and deny whatever they can for the insurance company. And we go in, properly take care of the client. I wanted to show you some of my board members. Just two of them, in fact. The top one is a gentleman by the name of Don Wood. Don Wood was the gentleman that when Katrina happened, there was a big argument. The argument was what came first, wind, or flood. And he proved with his document, a 44 page document, that it was wind. And 14 major attorneys became multimillionaires because of that. Steve Patrick, that's the one down below. Steve Patrick runs the largest uh, Facebook group for contractors in the United States. It's called Level the Playing Field. He's got over 24,000 contractors, and he runs with his partner, Tony Rugla, who's also a board member. Uh, they run the largest appraisal company in the United States. Now, appraisal for public adjusting is not the valuation of a home for a loan. It's a claims resolution method. And we'll get in, into more of that in a minute. And let me just uh, go back up here. Now, take the time to make sure that you copy this web address right here and also my phone number. So when we're done with this, uh, you should go to this web page. There'll be a syllabus there. There'll be a ton of information, ton of testimonials for you to, to look at, and more information about what we do. I'm going to go over a lot, but there's no way I can go over everything within an hour. So take the time to write that address down, and we'll get involved with that. Uh, and we'll talk to you. I'll talk to you on an individual basis as much as you want. I'm here to try to make sure that uh, you guys who have been um, one of my good friends is a gentleman by the name of Walter Brennan. He's one of your members. And uh, Walter came to me and we are talking about it. And I've been thinking about it for many years about trying to make a new paradigm of home inspector slash public adjuster. And they say, well, what does a public adjuster really do? We go in when a homeowner or somebody that has a property has an insurance policy and we make sure that they get exactly what they're due. In the process, we make a fee off of what we bring in for the client. And usually we bring in a minimum of an ex extra four times more than they'll ever get for themselves. 
So it's quite profitable. Um, again, a pub adjuster, what we're gonna do is we're gonna teach you how to go in, sign up the claim, and I'll actually show you how to get other people to help sign up claims for you. And you'll be able to have people that'll do that. Um, you right now are going through a, what I call a real estate desert. Last year, when I was in California, I was learning about the majority of the people that I saw at the conference uh, were telling me that they were down 40% in their business that year. And that's hard to believe that they could still maintain themselves. And, but they were hard fast to do what they could to stay in business. Now we have it. And that was because uh, there was uh, people that were not willing to get a home inspection because they were afraid somebody else would put a bid on a property and they would lose that bid. So we had a lopsided amount of who, who wanted houses and who had houses to sell. Now what we do is we have a, a bunch of high, what, what people are considering high interest rates. Now, I don't know about you, when I bought my first house, I bought it at 9%, didn't even think about it. But the, excuse me for saying this, but the snowflakes that we have nowadays think that's a lot of money and they don't wanna do that. So uh, we've actually lost, as uh, Walter had told me not too long ago, we've lost over one third of the realtors in the state of Pennsylvania. And that's a pretty, pretty good prime state. Um, and I'm assuming that you're probably having the same problems and the challenges where you're at. So we need to be able to take care of that and have it so that you can not only help the homeowner to actually protect themselves in the process of buying that first house. But then once a year, you do a little 15, 20 minute inspection for insurance purposes, or as I like to say, be able to walk through the property and see gold bars and gold nuggets that nobody else knows they're there. Process those claims for those people and then hand them a nice big fat check. And you also get a nice, a nice portion of that check. So, um, and it's easy. You're seeing problems all the time. But the problem was is that every time you mention it, it's actually a negative. Well, what do you think would happen if you're working with a realtor and you turn around and you're not only, you're putting in money into their deals. They're gonna love you for it. They're gonna actually gonna take that sheet of paper that they give, that, that they hand out, and they're gonna put your name at the top because anybody who's a problem solver who can put money into her deals, working with different, different clients, they're gonna love you for it. So uh, what can you make? What kind of money is there? Well, let's say that we have, we have two different types of states. We have what is known as a cap state and a non-cap state in the industry. Well, the first thing we're gonna do is actually look at you to take a test and become licensed in the industry. But inside there, we have two different types of states. Like I said, cap to non-cap. Um, a cap state, one of them would be like Texas, another one would be like New York. Uh, there's just a handful of cap states in the United States, but most of them are non-cap. But a cap state will be, for a small claim, and all claims will be about 10%. So on a uh, $10,000 claim, it take you about five minutes, I'm sorry, five minutes, five hour, five to seven hours to take care of it, and you'll walk away with $1,000. If you're doing a non-cap state, let's say like Colorado, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, there's a whole mess of them. Uh, they'll take you the same five to seven hours, but you'll walk away with 20% or $2,000. Imagine doing just three of those in a week. Nice chunk of change. And that's only a small claim. You know, there, I'll teach you one of our guys, his name is Kenny Stokes. He's the number one fire guy in the United States. In fact, I was just talking to him not that long ago because my son just moved to Tennessee and said he wanted to do fire claims. And I knew that Kenny had had more information about uh, fire claims than what we had before. So I had him, I asked him if he would actually talk to uh, my son. He did for about an hour and 45 minutes, which we recorded and we have it for you now. But he actually shows you how to get every single fire claim. Now, a $100,000 fire claim, it'll take you about a week to process, but you're gonna make 10 grand. 
10 grand for, for one week. Not too bad of a payout. Hey, Mark, yeah. we got a question from, uh, from Brian Hill. He sure. wants to know if you have any software programs. The software that will be that you would use, um, there's there's three different softwares out there, and they're all about estimating softwares. The number one software that most insurance companies use uh, is called Xactimate. I like to call that exact crap. Um, it actually lies to you. It shows you things uh, that are not true. When you take the shingles off of a roof, um, the tar paper doesn't come off at the exact same time, but they're trying to tell you that they're gonna bundle them both together and only pay for the shingles. So they're, they're already stealing from you to begin with. Uh, also at the same time, um, it's not a really easy software to use. It's quite difficult because it wasn't really designed by a good software engineer. The other one, another one out there, it's called Simbility. That's kind of like a poor man's uh, exactimate. Uh, it's not a good prop, it's not a good software. The best one out there that I like, it's believe it or not, it's 50% cheaper than the Xactimate, which is $300 a month. That's another thing I, I don't like about it. It's over, overpriced because you're not buying the software, you're buying their database. Because as the prices uh, change, uh, you have to keep up with them. And by the way, we don't care about inflation because as the prices of things rise, so does your income. You don't care about the economy because uh, we always work on the other side of Murphy's Law. Whatever can go wrong, will go wrong at the most inoperable time. And that information, uh, we actually keep up with Murphy's Law. So there's always a consistent flow of business all the time. And I'll go into marketing in a little, a little bit later on. So the first thing is that um, the software that I think you should use, and we like to teach you when we train you on, is, and it's cheaper, it's only $160 a month. It's called SimSol, S-I-M-S-O-L. They're based in Tampa. And they have a contents database for, uh, for contents. They have a, a residential uh, structural con uh, uh, database, and they have a commercial database for commercial, co commercial claims. By the way, just to talk about commercial for a second, there's no such thing as a small commercial claim. It pays out very well, and it you use the exact same license for a regular pub adjuster to also do commercial as well as residential. By the way, when you do contents like a fire or a flood or something like that, uh, every single thing that you touch makes you money. Uh, contents are done at what is known as ACV, actual cash value. That's replacement cost minus depreciation. And so we're gonna show you first is how to properly sign up the claim, understand about policy. And, and then the next thing we're gonna go through is how to create a power estimate. A power estimate is an estimate that'll have authoritative notes within it. Out of 25 years, I've only had one person ever ask me one question. And I thought everybody would ask me this question. How do you get the insurance companies to do what you want them to do? Well, number one, it's called facts and evidence. First thing we're going to do is we're going to teach you as if you know nothing. I'm not going to assume that you know anything. Second thing is I'm going to teach you exactly what goes through the mind of an insurance adjuster. And we always like to say when they actually think. You're going to, be, you're going to love this. They're so poorly trained, it's not funny. And the insurance companies do that on purpose. They figure the least they know how to, to write on, the least that they're going to have to pay on. I kind of look at that as being a little bit dastardly myself. So we're going to teach you how to set up the estimate and then have power notes behind the estimate. That'll be a, either building code, OSHA regulations, or manufacturer's recommendation for installation, which building code turns into building code and is the most powerful building code on the planet. In fact, it's actually a large law firm and an engineering firm protecting the, in the integrity of the manufacturer. So they're the best, that's the best out of the bunch. Also, there'll be lead, mold, and asbestos if applicable. So you either have state law or federal law stating to the insurance adjuster why they have to do what they need to do. It's not a matter of if, ends, or buts. 
They've got to do it. Or otherwise, they're violating state law and federal law. So I hope that answers your question. Now, um, one of the things that uh, um, people always ask is, how can you get the, what the client needs and still cover your fee? Well, there are many things that contractors don't put in their estimate. They kind of bundle them together and they don't, they don't take the time to put them into the estimate, but yet they're, they're bundling it in the estimate, but they're not actually naming it. Well, if you don't name it from the, client, from the contractor's point of view, we do in the pub adjusting realm. So I'm just gonna give you a couple things what they are. Uh, we have uh, O&P. O&P is in most states except for three is 10 and 10. That's 10% overhead, 10% profit. So that's 20% right there, which automatically covers our fee. But on top of that, we have uh, removing and resetting of things. And that will be for the walls, ceilings, and, um, and floors. And then you have uh, uh, other things like debris removal, uh, protection. You know, when you do a roof, you usually try to protect all the bushes and everything else down below. Well, that's that's actually a cost. And then um, then they also, if you ever notice, they run like a, a wheel type of device that has magnets magnets in it, and it takes up all the uh, all the nails that might have gotten loose. Uh, that's also another step. And then you have uh, cleaning, and uh, sometimes they'll also uh, not put in for fees and taxes that they have to pay. So if you add all those different things up, it more than compensates because we're going to put those in and we're going to get those above and beyond what the what the uh, contractor is going to do. We always know more of what need what we can legally get than what a contractor does. Contractors, uh, a lot of their estimates are nothing more than uh, three or four lines, uh, and that's it. So um, you're going to be able to give them tons of detail. And it's extremely easy to do in the, in the software. The software for SimSol is actually a menu driven software. And if you're a seventh grader and you can read, you can do, you can work this software. It's that easy. It's really simple. And what you're doing is you're taking, okay, are we looking at a wall? Are we looking at a ceiling? And then we go with what the item is, what the, what the medium is in there. Maybe it's a wood ceiling or it's drywall. And then we go into finer details until we find out exactly how much square footage, cubic yardage, you know, all those, you know, linear footage, whatever the item is math mathematically. And it's all simple geometry. And we go over all that to make it real simple for you. Once you have that, you, you put the, all those line items in. And then in the back, depending upon if you have a particular type item like drywall or we're doing roofing. If we're doing roofing, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab either a GAF or an Owen Corning manufacturer's recommendation for installation, which we have inside the website for you. And you can just print them out right, right straight from your cell phone and also from your PC. Our, our website works perfectly with the PC and the cell phone, and we come with phone and email mentorship. So if you have a question for anything between 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, not including holidays, or if I happen to be at the conference, you know, for you guys in, in Atlantic City, then, you know, I'm always there for you. We're just a phone call away and we'll get on the same page and solve the problem. And you can ask me tons of questions. All wisdom comes from asking questions. That's what my father taught me. So in the process of, okay, we've just, we've gone over um, the education. The education is literally over 24,000 pages, but you don't need to know all 24,000 pages. There's training and then there's support materials and then there's backup reports. So if you say something in your estimate, you can literally go into the site pull out either a repair report or you can pull out a, 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 a construction type of report or you can pull out a, uh, a FCNS report. That's, that's about do you have coverage with the policy? And we can go into that when you, when you, when you, if you join. And then, then the back part would be 
state and federal case laws so that you have you can actually show the insurance adjuster, hey, look, this is as far as it's going to go for you because this is what it is. By the way, there's a uh, case law that you'll hear in every state. It's called the three tradesmen's rule. And it talk about overhead and profit. But here's the thing. They use the same three tradesmen's rule in every state. They talk about it in every state. And it's, it's a state case law for Pennsylvania. So automatically it's showing you and then it's explaining to you that state case laws are not ex exclusive to one particular state. They go through all the states and actually the insurance uh, uh, adjusters violate that and, and everywhere throughout the country. Um, now, uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about uh, wh what we have. And then from there, I want to talk to you about um, how to start marketing and how to start finding all this work that you need to find. Because that's the problem right now. I, I know you agree. It's just that you know, we need more work. We need to have consistent flow of work all the time, regardless of what's happening with the economy. And I'm going to start going over that in a second. But first, let's go. Uh, first thing we have state licensing, and that'll be the that'll be the first thing we do. We go through, and we'll help you to prep for your state. Um, we'll show you how to go through a glossary first. See, because no matter how easy the question is. If you don't know what a definition of, the, of one little word, you can't answer it. And you can't, I can't even explain things to you because we're gonna need to use a lot of those words to actually demonstrate to you what that section of what is known as the ISO or Insurance Service Office section, there's seven of them, what that really means and, and what's, in, what's that section involved with. So we have to go through that glossary first. It's kind of like what uh, I say Carol Burnett used to say about giving birth. It's like taking your lower lip and pulling it over the top of your head if you don't do what's right first. So um, make sure that you, you go through that glossary, then you go through the seven, the seven major sections. We'll that then have practice quizzes in there that you can study and prepare yourself. And, and, the, and the questions, a lot of, a lot of the, the uh, questions in there are coming from the national test there's over 4,000 particular uh, questions they have in there, and we have about 400 of them. So we're not only showing you real live questions and what the answers are, but we're also showing you exactly uh, what they look like and how they how they feel when you look at it. They're, they're, they're all basically uh, multiple choice. So they're not different, they're not that hard. Usually you have two that you can pretty much throw away. They're, they're really stupid the way they write them. And then, and then two, one, and it's kind of like, which one is it? You know, they're, they're kind of close, uh, but one will have a little bit more, um, definitely has, has more uh, reasoning to why it should be that one. But we're gonna go over and train you on why it's the right question and what's the right answer for it. So you're gonna be prepared for it. And it takes about, 60 days to be good, to get up and running, to be licensed, processing business, and knowing how to market yourself and start to take care of your clients. Now, um, the next thing is policy. Now, I think I already told you we have residential, commercial, business owner policies, and loss of use and contents. So, uh, I can go into that even more detail a little bit later. Um, then you have what is known as uh, power estimate, which I showed you. You need to have authoritative notes within your estimate. I'll show you how to gather the information, how to how to actually then insert it into the system and do the measurements and everything else and the math, and then automatically the software will come up with the actual answer for what's the cost for the materials and what's the cost for the actual labor. Now, um, and estimating um, 15 months ago, a sheet of CDX, that's outdoor plywood, it was going for 30, 37, $39. There are places in the country today 
that same sheet of CDX is now going for $90. But understand, as the prices of things rise, so does your income. So you're not worrying about that. Why? Because uh, we make money on a percentage basis. So as the things rise, so does your income. Isn't that a nice place to be? Also, uh, remember, we're not worrying about the economy. The reason why we don't care about the economy is because we're working on, like I said, Murphy's Law. Whatever can go wrong will go wrong in the most inoperable time. And so we're doing that. To give you an idea of one little item, if anywhere in the country right now, uh, if you have a hot water heater, it's going to last between seven to nine years. And then it just either just out route dies or it bursts and will damage the house somewhere between 25 to uh, seven to twenty five thousand dollars. And so you have about 60 to 65 of those in any area that you have about a half a million homes every single day. And that's only one a multitude of different things that you're gonna be able to put in for a claim. And I'll go into the details of what different types of claims you can put in and how you can find them and market, market for them. Um, let's see, now, uh, the next thing is uh, knowing how to properly um, document the claim. We have template letters and documentation for you so that you can just pull them out modify them just a little bit, bam, you've got letters and, and all the different things that you need for hard, you know, for hard copy for the claim, above and beyond the estimate and the power estimate that comes behind it. So um, we then go to uh, constructional engineering. Sometimes like with mainly with roofing, the insurance adjuster, if they can't argue the point, they'll try to bring out a, a quote unquote expert and that's usually going to be an engineer not to be afraid of them in fact i'm going to teach you right now how to take care of them when an engineer comes out the first thing you're going to tell to tell them or they're just going to say that they're an engineer 50 percent of the time the guy's not even an engineer they're just sending anybody out and expecting you just to believe they're baloney so what you're going to do is you're going to tell that engineer if he's going to come to the property he better have a copy of his license, his engineering license. If he doesn't have a copy of his engineering license, you tell him right off the bat, you're not even gonna be allowed on the property. In fact, I might even contact the local authorities and let them know that I have somebody trying to commit fraud here on my property. And trust me, they will fold like a cheap shirt. They're not that brave. And then once they do have a real engineer coming out, you're gonna be taught and trained by us how to do forensic engineering. Forensic engineering is really easy. There's, we teach you just on particular types of claims. And so you're gonna know what is true, what's true and what's not true. And if you see him giving you things that aren't true, there's a thing in the engineering uh, associations, it's, it's that they have to have, um, uh, that they can't lie to you. If they lie to you, they break ethics rules. When they break in ethics rules, there's 25 questions. If they violate one of them, they violate them all. And you take that documentation of it, take it to the licensing board for engineering, and they'll be put on probation for six months. How's that for having power? And if you, if you do a little Rockford Files, if you're old enough to remember that show, and you track them down still working during those six months, then you actually take that to the licensing board, and they lose their license permanently. It's not nice to have that kind of power. In fact, I'm gonna tell you right now, you just let them know what you can and what you will do to them. And they will say, yes, sir, and stand in line. Cause they're not about to throw away all that money for college and the time and effort that it took them to go through it. And then all the cost of their expensive office that they have and the cost of all the equipment that they have and just throw that away. They won't even try to come anywhere near there. They'll they'll say, no, well, I." wanted to handle it for you, but, uh, I, you know, I could only say what, you know, what's right. I couldn't, I couldn't uh, tell them anything, but, and they will, they will, like I said, fold like a cheap shirt. Now, um, we're going to teach you how to negotiate. Uh, we're going to teach you tactics and techniques. 
we're going to show you how and and your state uh if you can uh record without them knowing it and if if you uh if you can't if it's a if it's a two-party state then we're going to show you how to get a single party state and a cell phone from that state and how to actually do that so that you can record them by using the other state's cell phone but you won't do it at the location you'll do it when after they leave and you will be uh legal because it's not where you physically are it's where your cell phone is connected to the switch like in pennsylvania it would be 215 uh if you're in uh new jersey it would be uh 609 so those laws for uh for recording haven't changed because we're still basically still have uh hard lines in the laws were were started with hard lines and cell phones didn't even exist so you'll be able to record it if need be and i'll show you how to do it uh also uh, when we're dealing with a uh with an adjuster i'm going to teach you with the number one negotiator in the united states who, who was the number one negotiator for the fbi for international terrorism you might have heard his name before his name is chris voss amazing gentleman harvard law school threw their stuff out and they realized that his stuff worked every single time he's going to teach you how to manipulate the emotions and the and objectivity of your of your opponent and they won't even see it coming also we're going to have for you see the insurance adjusters are trained with what is known as a talking point and a talking point has about a grain of salt of truth and all the rest of it's a big giant size lie so we're going to train you how to to know about their stupid talking points and i have uh, one of my attorneys who's one of my board members david Furtado, has set up arguments legal arguments just like an attorney would set up and we have them for you so that you can actually then and also you can actually take the hard copy of that argument and actually add it to the back of your of your uh, your estimate scenario for your power estimate um so you, you have all the documentation you need but you're going to be able to argue it directly to them about why they're they're talking stupid talk and you're not allowed you're not going to allow them to do that um when we're dealing with uh, uh insurance companies every once in a while we have to the first thing we're going to do is do what is known as go up the ladder now the first adjuster that you're going to meet they're going to be the guy with the least amount of authority out of the group the next guy will be known as the in-house guy a lot of times he's the worst guy that you don't want to talk to and uh, because he was usually the worst guy out in the field and wouldn't you know it that the insurance companies thought hey let's promote that guy uh so then number three number three is kind of like what bill cosby said about his parents one time he says these these aren't the people that i knew growing up these are these are a bunch of old people trying to get their way into heaven well the uh, the the heavy hand which is on number three is is lightened up because he's a regional guy and so therefore uh he has a lot more his hands open up a lot easier and you when you go up that ladder and i'll show you how to get everybody that's in that ladder we have a nice little sneaky way we do it and then uh, the fourth guy i actually uh was talking to a fourth guy one time and uh i said you know i'm talking about the client and everything else he says you're talking to me about a claim i says yeah i says number one number two and number three you know aren't doing what's right for this client so i went up the ladder and you're the next guy and he goes do you realize i'm on a golf course i said i don't care where you are you know, if you don't take care of my client's claim you're going to see me in front of your house the next day and he goes mr hauser that's not necessary he says uh he says we will call you in about an hour not i will we will i picked that one up real quick so i found out later on that he basically beat up on number three who beat up on number two who beat up on number one and number one gives me a call says mr hauser we're going to give your client every single thing that they need <laughs> go off course give me a break anyway so we're going to show you how to first go up the ladder if that's not working for you then we'll show you how to go through appraisal now there's a handful of states 
that there are no appraisal. In fact, I believe it's only two. One, I can't remember off the top of my head, but the other one is called New Jersey. Uh, and so you can't do appraisal in New Jersey, but then you it's easy to hook up with one of our attorneys and send it through that that attorney. And you still get paid because you're the you're the expert witness, you're the you're the person who has all the 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 materials for the estimate and all that kind of stuff. They don't do that. You do that and you get paid for all the materials and all the things. So you don't charge your fee, but you get paid through the attorney in the process. And re regardless, we're going to take care of that client and get them paid for what they're what they're done. Out of out of 200 claims, one may go to a, to, to to court. I would say seven of them will go to appraisal. Um, and that's pretty much the average, you know, and all the rest of them are just basically going up the ladder. So I hope that answers that question for you. Um, now, uh, marketing. How do we find claims? Uh, I'd love to ask you to, to raise your hands, but I can't see you guys. Um, how many how many people here? I'm going to ask the question, although you can just answer it and you know to yourself. How many people have ever heard of a REIA? R E I A, Real Estate Investment Association. These people are fantastic. They're beaten up into their brain by all their people in their organization that everything has to be a win, win, win. No negative things, no new legislation at the state level. They make sure that their people are in line so that never happens. These are the kind of people, and if there's anybody out there from Texas, you'll know what I'm talking about. These are the kind of people you wouldn't mind taking over and bringing to a, to a Texas barbecue. You know, you got the meat and the smoker for at least 18 hours. These are those kind of people, good people. And they're trying to do what's right for themselves and for their, for their clients and for everybody else, just good people. So you'll contact them. You have two different types. You have flippers and you have landlords. Uh, the, the flippers, uh, if they know you can add an extra six to ten thousand dollars to their deals, they will shove you into work. They'll 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 get you to get more money for them. They they just they these people are freakish about networking. They'll also turn you on. Uh, every single uh, flipper and landlord have their own specific small plumber that they use. And so when you're at these meetings. You hook up with as many as you can, and you'll get a different plumber for practically every single one of them. And these plumbers see a minimum of three covered, and they're always the actual damage that happens. So flood, wind, fire, all that kind of stuff. It's known as a peril. So they'll they'll they will have at least three covered perils every single week, and so it's a nice flow of business consistent, consistently. Um, after six months, you're going to have more work than you can handle because you're going to set up more what I call affiliates, uh, which are flippers, landlords, contractors, you name it. And so you might want to start thinking about adding somebody else to help you to process the business. I know that's kind of a unusual thing that you're hearing when you're considering about how crazy the, the market is right now, but that market doesn't affect public adjusting one iota. You have a certain amount of people that have damage consistently all the time. And all we do is we just we just tap into the flow and it comes right to you. I'd be more than willing to talk more about that with anybody. Let me talk about a particular type of claim. And then, then I'll get into more of the marketing. One type of claim, this is a simple story that happened many years ago. It happens all the, almost all the time throughout the, with the Indian industry where you have somebody that has, um, they have a party at their house. And um, there's other ways that this comes about, but this particular scenario, they had a party at the house and you know how, how it is. Women control the downstairs bathroom. And the guys, well, we have to beg to be able to try to use the upstairs bathroom. And this one guy, that's what he did to the guy who owned the property. And the guy finally broke down. He says, go ahead, use, this, use the bathroom upstairs. Well, sure enough, the thing that he was most was afraid of happened. 
uh, the guy went up there and clogged the toilet and all that lovely third degree level water went out all over the floor. And thank God that they had uh, well tiled floors and well tiled walls that were also sealed, but nobody told the homeowner to properly, and you should be telling all of your homeowners this when you go out to, to do a home inspection, they should caulk underneath the toilet because that water will just go right down underneath the toilet and downstairs to the next to the next room down below. Well, that's what happened here, except it went into a dining room. And I'll be nice and say that it didn't hit the dining room table, but you and I both know that water, that lovely third degree gray water would have hit the table. That's the first piece of furniture that went out to the curb the next day. But I'm saying it didn't happen. But what did happen was the adjuster came there from the insurance company and we took him upstairs and we brought him into the room and he sees, he sees that they pretty much got it all cleaned up. But here's something I need to tell you right off the bat. Even though the homeowner cleaned up the mess, the homeowner is supposed to be paid for the work they did. It doesn't have to be just a contractor. that has, If you have the homeowner that does all the work because, heck, they might even be a contractor, they get to be paid automatically. So whatever the work is, there's a value for it. That value has to be paid for by the insurance company. So it doesn't make a difference if they do it or if a contractor does it or their neighbor or their uncle or whoever. They have to get paid for it. So the insurance adjuster goes there. He looks at what's there and he goes, well, there's not really much here after the deductible. I may not even have to pay you anything at all. Then we take him downstairs into the dining room. He looks at the ceiling in that dining room and he sees that drywall after all that unbelievable water hit it. And he goes, well, I've got to take care of this. If I don't take care of this, something may happen and I may not like it. So he goes, he says, well, we'll, we'll fix this drywall and, and we'll, we'll do a beautiful blending in on it. And then we'll pay. Oh, I see that there's some, uh, some, some stain marks coming down the wall. So we'll actually put kills on that because I know that if we don't, we just paint it, that all those stains will just keep bleeding through and you'll paint over them and they'll bleed through. So we got to stop that so it doesn't do that. So we'll put kills in that. And he goes, well, we'll give your whole room one whole coat of paint. And we go, no, we want two. And you say, by the way, when you talk to an insurance adjuster, you don't ask, you tell. You tell them what they're going to do. You never ask. They're not in charge, you are. So we get two coats of paint and we didn't tell him everything just yet. So he, the next thing he does is he looks down at the floor and he goes, he sees a wooden floor and he goes, whew, looks like we dodged that bullet. And you go, what do you mean? Well, it's a wooden floor, right? But I don't see any discoloration. I don't see any cupping. I don't see any buckling. So heck, no damage, no money. And we go, hang on a second. See over there, there's actually a uh, opening right there. That's the only way to get in and out of this room. So you're going in and out, so you get double time, so you get a higher, higher uh, traffic in that area. And then over here is like average traffic over here. Now I want you to put your hands on both those floors and, and rub them. How's that feel? Smooth or rough? Smooth, right. So there's no difference, would you agree, there's no difference between high traffic or low traffic for those particular areas. And he's gonna go, yeah, 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 I'll give you that. And he's he's stupid because there's actually a way that he could, he could play with you, but we stop him in his tracks, but oh, stop him in the tracks before they actually, the thought may actually go to their brain, which it usually won't because they're not that smart. So we take and we say, look, here's where the water did hit. And it was a good two and a half, three, four foot puddle right here. And it took them at least five to six minutes by the time they cleaned up what was upstairs to try to stop it from keep coming. And by the time they got down here to clean this up, it was at least five to six minutes. So put your hand right there. Feel that. Feels like sandpaper, doesn't it? That's because when water is on a floor for five to six minutes, it automatically is going to raise the grain. These nice people are going to walk through this room, walk through that section with their brand new Sunday school shoes on, and they're going to take the finish right off this floor. So automatically, you know, we you know, in six weeks, we're going to, you know, they're going to have to refinish the whole floor. And so uh, we're going to have to have this all floor refinished. 
And by the way, now here's where we're going to get them. If you look down that hall, down into the foyer and into the living room, it's all continuous. So we need to get all of that. Oh yeah, by the way, so is the paint. So we just, uh, and then now he's sitting there going, okay, okay, you got me, but that's it, right? And you go, no, nope, that's not it. He goes, what do you mean that's not it? it? What else is there? Well, and there's two scenarios. One doesn't happen that often, but it does happen. And the second one happens so many times, it's not funny. So the first one is we go, you see all these little black dots all over this floor? Yeah, well, what about them? Well, see, those are nail heads. This floor has been sanded once before. We sand this floor again, we're gonna take that head right off and it's gonna be nothing holding this, holding this floor down to the subfloor and it's gonna be floating all over the place. Oh yeah, yeah I see that. So we're gonna to have to replace all this floor down the hall, into the foyer and into the, into the living room. Now the second standard happens an awful lot more. You see this floor? This is a pre-finished floor. And I hate those stupid DIY shows when they sit there and they go, we're going to give you a hardwood floor. The heck you are. This is, this is veneer. And it's, it's builder's grade. And most people are, are told by the contractors, we're giving you a hardwood floor. And they're not telling them that it's a builder's grade. See, builder's grade is so thin, you can't sand it. But it looks real pretty when you look at it. But they've been lied to. In fact, that's another thing you can actually check to see, know what the difference is between builder's grade and, and, regu and regular, regular grade, and then point it out to your clients. Hey, this house actually only has builder's grade flooring in here. And well, what's that difference? Well, if something happens to this floor, you know, you're gonna have to replace all of it because you can't fix it. Really? Wouldn't that be a powerful, powerful tool for you guys to tell them? Again, um, remember when you tell them negative things, it usually comes off as negative. When you tell, when you find negative things and then you find damage and you can fix it, then it's a major positive for you and everybody else. So always keep that in mind when you're, when you're looking at different things for the client. So automatically we just went and took a claim that was maybe five to $7,000 and it's closer to $46,000. And if you're in a non-cap state, you already know you just made more than eight thousand dollars for that little story and i'll teach you tons of that kind of stuff that you're going to see and look at when you're going through these properties so you tell me is public adjusting worth it oh it's more than worth it um if you go onto our website you're going to hear a guy by the name of don that i met when i was at uh nahi many 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 years ago and he was there he was from florida and uh, he saw our, he was just staying at my booth. He was just enamored with my booth. And he comes up and he says, oh, Mark, he says, uh, I, I am a home inspector, public adjuster. And we've started a firm and we actually have four public adjusters. And he's telling well, we make more money on the public adjuster side. But he says, I, I realize that they're, they're, they're a great marriage. You put them both together and it's a powerful tool. And you, you, you utilize both to help each, to help both sides. So, and he's, he'll, you'll hear his testimony on that website it's an, it's an audio strip that you can listen to um Our, we got a question from vincent he wants to know uh, what training is required to start this business first thing we need to do is we need to prep you for your state license and uh and then also start going through the basic procedures that'll take about uh 90 to 150 hours uh our program uh, is designed so that whatever you need, it's available to you. Um, the, the training is is not as long as you think out of the, out of all that stuff we have there. A lot of that is just all your support stuff that you're going to need once you show them what that has to be done. Um, our program, uh, normally when people come to me, I have a whole nother track of people who come to me through Google that are looking to become a pub adjuster. A lot of them are roofing salespeople for companies that have been beaten up and they want to be able to beat back. That's a good portion of the people that come to me. And then just other people who have actually had uh, claims at their own house. And they just realize that they want to do this kind of work and they want to be able to do for other people what's happened, what happened to them. And, I, and I've got a bunch of other different kinds of people for other different reasons that come to us through that. They normally pay about $3,500 to become a public adjuster 
for a lifetime membership with us. We have it so that it's, uh, we've done a special deal that uh, we want to make sure that it's, as many home inspectors I can get on, the, on, on key and becoming the new paradigm. And so I've set it up so that for the cost of $50 a month uh, for the monthly dues, just like you pay for monthly dues with Internachi, you get access to everything. The coaching, the, we have a, a video blog post similar to like what Joe Rogan does once a month for about three hours. And you can go and you can see that and you can actually have questions asked and some of the, some of the top board members we have and other different people will answer, answer those questions as well as myself. We also interview a lot of our members so that you actually hear their stories and you see what they did to actually get, you know, to find extra business and different things. And, and, and the little things that they found along the way, uh, they're sharing with you. And then we also have um, uh, just high training uh, that are even at a higher level that are, uh, I'm actually training another person and you're actually hearing me directly train them in the, in the video blogs uh, above and beyond all the normal training that we all have. So um, and that's all for $50 a month. And um, and you have me, uh, like I said, it's in standard time, five, between 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, and um, not including holidays, or if I'm at the Internachi conference, um, I'm there for you guys. Um, or maybe if I, I don't take that many vacations, but every once in a while, my wife and I, we like to go out and go to like Lancaster and places like that. But outside of that, I'm always there for you. And if you leave a message for me, as soon as I get back, or if you call me and I'm on the phone with somebody, I will immediately call you back as soon as I'm done talking with them. But I'm gonna give them the due, the due time. So if, you, if, you're, if I'm on the phone with you and somebody calls in with me, um, I keep finishing until I'm done with what I need to tell you. I'm not gonna shortchange you. I'm gonna give you exactly what you're due. And then I'll go back and then I'll, I'll talk to the other people that tried to call in during that other time. Uh, I feel that uh, um, we have a family of people all across the country, and um, we treat each other that way. Um, here's a, uh, if you make sure that you do have that, that address, I'm going to give it to you again. Um, like I said, that's Don Wood, that's Steve Patrick. Uh, here's just one little meeting we had, and everybody kind of kind of wanted to make selfies with me. Um, this guy is Eric Baker right down there at the bottom. Uh, that's that's uh, uh, Wakamba right there in the middle. Um, and there's just tons of people. There's, there's um, Chris A. Miller. Our people actually share the, the information that they get. Uh, Chris A. Miller told us about, um, he's a trapper when he was a kid. And he was talking to us about raccoons and that how raccoons will try to invade into a home and then they'll, they'll birth like five or six pups, and then they'll bring all their family members in, and they'll defecate on everything. And what ends up happening, 2020 and 60 Minutes had a, had a case where they called it a sick house. And in that sick house, um, people couldn't live there anymore, but you can't sell your house, and you can't, if you don't disclose it, the disclosure laws, they'll sue you into oblivion, so you can help that, that family by getting every single thing that they need, no money out of their pocket and sanitize the whole place. It's gotta be one of the most easiest sales on the planet. And then we'll, and then we'll show you how to hook up with the average animal control people, which will actually notify you of these, ha these things happening. So they'll constantly tell you that this happened to a home and then you'll actually go in and be able to take care of it and get them every single thing that they need. Also, you can contact a company called John Don, and they're the second best supply house for firewood restoration. And they do training all across the country on how to sanitize things when raccoons, believe it or not, get into a home. Squirrels aren't covered. Raccoons are known as small bears. In fact, they can smell a turkey dinner about a mile away from your house. Whereas like a Kodiak bear, they can smell an elk, an elk up to 20 miles away. Something about Bears, be it, a, be it a small one like a raccoon or a big one like, like a Kodiak bear, they have really good you know, smell guy. They're really good for smelling. 
and they they know what's going on and they'll they'll try to go into the property uh hey, Mark, we got we got a few more questions here okay uh, brian hill wants to know is licensing required in all states uh, ohio for example yeah all states all states have licensing um there's uh three states that if you go, if you want to get an extra license in that state, then uh, like you're not from that state, um, uh, New York, Florida, and California, you'll have to take the test over again. All the other states you won't, except for three states that don't have licensing, Alabama, Arkansas, and Alaska. You can't be a pub adjuster in those three states, but all the rest of them, it's a simple reciprocal, You'll actually get another bond. You have to get what is known as an assurity bond. You're holding large sums of money. Now, contractors love pub adjusters because when the check comes in, the check has three categories of names on the check. It's going to have the client's name. It's going to have uh, uh, the, the lender's name. And usually there's no more than two of those. And then it's going to have your name on it. So the client signs the check. The lender signs the check. They send it back to you. You sign the check and you put it into what we like to call as an escrow-like account, where one check goes in, two checks come out. One check for the client and one check for you, which will then go into your business account. And the legal term for that is called no commingling of funds. You're showing the paper trail of where the money went. It's real simple, it's real easy. Um, and it, this is why pub adjusters never get sued. If they follow that, what I just told you, they never, ever get sued. And I know as, as home inspectors, that's not always the case. You forget something or miss something or whatever, you know, that, that can be right at you, but not in public adjusting. We're holding large sums of money. We're doing major things for families and everything else. And by the way, um, if they're out of the home, we're going to show you how to get short-term executive housing so that they have a place to stay and it's not a hotel room. Also, we're going to show you how to make sure that if we do that, we can't keep the kids in the same school district. I'm going to show you how to get the, the new school district to pick up the kids from the new house, drop them all at the old school and pick them up at the end of the day and bring them back to the new house so that Mrs. Jones doesn't have her kids whining and complaining that they can't see their friends anymore. That's how fine a details do we help you with. By the way, when that happens and she figures out you've just done that for her, get ready for a hug. It's coming in your direction because her whole life is all upside down. Or there's a nice good Yiddish word, I'm 25% German Jew. It's called her life is being fishimmel. It's upside down. She doesn't know what to do and you help her become normal. And it's a big deal. That's why uh, when you want to expand, if there's any women on this, this, this uh, Zoom, I want to let you know that women do great at this business. Some of the best people we have in the, in the association are women. Women are always great at asking open-end questions and they beat up on insurance adjusters really well. If you ask an attorney what an open-end question is, they'll tell you it's the hole he just dug, waiting for you to fall into it. Women do it naturally. And then, and they, and they hold their ground. Uh, if, if something happens, they don't, they don't, nobody can buffalo them. And they will always be able to connect with the wife and you're dealing with a large claim. The wife is the one who's making the decision of who they use. So women are really good at this. Um, and that if you, uh, so I always love to have it where people want to build, you know, families, actually the husband, we have a lot of husband and wife teams. And uh, in fact, I have a lot of the wives who have called, called me and have told me that this has actually improved their marriage and their families because they're both the husband and the wife become crusaders. And it's just something about that. I, I, you just have to be there and do it. And then also they're teaching their, their kids phenomenal principles of life while they're doing it. So um, it's a good, good way to go if you want to build your family. And instead of sending your kid to, to college and being taught by some 35-year-old communist, <laughs> excuse me for my opinion, uh, then you can actually you know, bring them into public justice as soon as they're 18. You can bring them in and they can start processing business. It's a, it's a good way to go. And you have freedom and money. Um, and then also, uh, like let's say we're gonna be working with small plumbers like I was talking about, you can actually 
turn them into consultants. We show you how to do that. We show you how to use the consultant rules and be able to, because nobody can teach you who can be a consultant. Nobody can tell you uh, what they can teach, what they can tell you, and nobody can tell you what you can pay them. You just can't pay them a percentage, but you can pay them a flat fee. You have two documents. You'll fill them out with the client, with with the with the consultant. Put it, put the paperwork in the client's doc and the client's file. You're legal to do what you please, uh, and you've motivated them to actually send you business on a consistent basis. All By right, the we, way, we still got a few more questions here. Sure. Uh, Michael wants to know what type of insurance do you need to carry and how much does it cost. Chris also wants to know is there travel involved, and Douglas wants you to elaborate more on the New York limitations. So well, what type of insurance do you need to carry and how much is the cost and is there travel involved? Uh, no state tells you that you have to carry insurance. Uh, but you're going to be bonded. That's what you are. You're, you're, you don't have insurance, but you have a bond. And the, the average bond is about $250 on average all across the country. And even though you have a bond for like state of Pennsylvania or Ohio, if you go into another state, you're going to have to get another bond for that one also. And by the way, if you start a firm, you're going to have everybody has a bond. And then also the company has a bond because they, they, the, the government feels that the company is an entity and they want you to have a bond. It's not any more expensive. It's just the same bond, but it's for the company. Um, what was the other question? Uh, Chris wants to know if there's travel involved. Well, if you want to do catastrophic work, there will be. But there's more than enough work where you live right now. You'll, you'll trip over, I act just $10,000 claims, you'll trip over them like crazy. Um, but if you do want to travel, it's all deductible, just like everything else would be. But if you want to make the mega money, you might want to want to travel maybe two times while you're doing this sometime in the future. You know, literally you could, the, f the first year uh, for two or three and a half months, you can actually, you know, pay off all of your debt, your house and everything else, and, and actually be able to come up with a good portion of your retirement. Uh, the second one will definitely pay for all of your retirement and any other cool thing that you want to do. Um, it's, it's mega money is what it is. Um, when you're dealing with, uh, the reason why Mexico Beach was so expensive is because a 200 mile an hour wind came right off the Gulf, hit the house, blew the walls right in and off the, the main wall. And then it created like a parachute effect and it rolled the whole house right off the foundation, cracking the foundation and the slab at the same time. That's why that one was so expensive. But every, you know, if, you, if you're in Louisiana, heck, Louisiana just got five major hurricanes. Uh, actually, it was, excuse me, four major hurricanes and one major storm in one year. And there's other different things that happen also. Like say, let's say that you're in, and I'm going to say this the right way because I always get beaten up otherwise, Minnesota. If you're in Minnesota, you're going to see up to five foot of heavy snow on the roof, which means that during the springtime, you know how like you see the, the rafter lines on a gable roof? Well, if you see one that dips in the middle, that's a crack rafter. You don't even have to check it. I can automatically tell you that's a crack rafter. And that means that whole slope and, and also that that's just for structural and then cosmetic, we're gonna get the whole roof, okay? And you can literally walk down the street and actually, and actually see it. And then uh, if you're smart enough to wanna get a drone, we actually show you how to get your FAA license. We help you to pass that, that test. And then you can use a drone and you can see both sides of the house and the whole areas. And drones are great uh, for finding work. You, you first do a whole big, high flying over 200 feet. And then once you know roughly where the damage areas are, you drop it down to 100, quick go to those areas and get high definition uh, photographs of the damage. And then you get the GPS coordinates too. And then you can just door knock those real quick and show the person right at the door. Uh, I'm gonna tell you that this is how it goes. If it's a Saturday, the old man's in the house watching a game, the wife comes to the door. Hi, my name is Mark Hauser. By the way, um, that was some storm two days ago, wasn't it? I'm actually a licensed uh, uh, certified master pub adjuster. And we just did a survey throughout this whole neighborhood. And you show them the tablet and you go, we just found this on your house. And we can get this all paid for without any money out of your pocket 
is this something and get this all taken care of so no more extra moisture gets into your home? Is this something you like to talk about? Now, this is the next thing you're going to hear. Harry, get out here. Check this out. Oh, watching the game. I don't care. Get your butt out here. He goes, oh, okay. Walks out. You tell him and show him exactly what you did to the wife. He gets this funny look on his face. What he's doing, he's trying to think about where on the roof is that picture that you showed him. Oh, and she gets this little twinkle in his eye, grabs his wife's hand, walks out to that part of the house, looks up. There it is. It's called an assumptive sale. You told them there's no risk. We'll take care of it right now. Um, there's so many other different ways of being able to uh, uh, find damage. Um, uh, when you're dealing with uh, um, a home inspection, you can't miss it when you get into the house because you're you know what you look. Also, um, you right, we, got, we got one more question that we should start wrapping it up here. Okay. Uh, Douglas Skinner wants to know, you mentioned New York has limitations. Can oh, yeah. You explain on that. Well, New York's limitations are that uh, if you're in New York, by the way, is he in New York? Looks like uh, he just said New York, so it didn't say okay. New York State. Uh, well, in New York, uh, if you're from New York, Yep. Uh, sometimes it's actually better if you have a friend that actually lives like in New Jersey or a, or a non or a non a non cap state uh, that's that's not New York, uh, New Hampshire or something like that, or you know, then get your get your license in that state and then do a reciprocal back into New York. You'll still have to take the test, but you won't have to pay for any forty hour pre licensing course. So and and. New York, it's a cap state, but it's a weird cap. It's 12.5%. And outside of that, that's pretty much the only odyssey about New York. Any, any other questions on that or anything else? I don't see any more questions. OK. Um, let me just close with with this, and um, I'm tr I I want you to actually help me help the public just I mean the home inspectors in Internachi. Um, we need to be able to protect this industry of home inspection, and as you, if you see and you like what you've seen today, and and it's there's nobody here that that can't do this and get it done real quickly. Uh, and then literally change their whole perspective of what they're doing. And I call I call it a super uh, inspector because you're inspecting every aspect of about the building. You're actually protecting the client in the beginning when they purchase the property. And then you're going to do it every year after that. You're going to do a little 15 minute inspection for them. And you're going to catch a claim that's that's in the property. Because see, if if you don't put the claim in within a year, then the insurance company can just say, you can't sue us and they can just ignore you. So you always want to get into the prop. And then what you do is you take the time, maybe once or twice, and then you take the people around with you and you show them how to do the home inspection for insurance purposes. And we have another section that you could, we're having a whole giveaway thing that you can give away for two, two different people, uh, for, for your clients. We have a giveaways. We show you how to give them documentation and a whole website that'll show them how to become how to get a better job, uh, how, how to become debt free, how to decorate their property, um, how to how how to if they have extra properties because of of things that they've gotten because of their parents dying or something like that, how to turn them into becoming a landlord uh, and and how to do it professionally. If you're dealing with realtors and you want to give them a special package, we have it so that you can give it so that they can sh you'll show them uh, professionally how to stage a property. And we give them, you give that to them from the association membership library that we give to you. And also how to, like I said, how to be a property manager, which is a lot of them are trying to flip over to do that because there's no other, nobody buying or buying or selling houses right now. So um, you can give that and help you to endear yourself to the, uh, to the, to your realtors. Um, we have that for you as well. Um, like I said, it's $50 monthly dues. 
really inexpensive to get involved and you get actually every single thing that you need to run your own company. And then um, if you go to this website that I have here uh, and you can join and, it, and it'll, it'll show you how you can do that. And the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go to the syllabus on there. And there's a whole syllabus that shows you every single thing that we teach. And remember, you don't have to know everything off the bat. You just, a lot of the stuff is also support materials. Uh, but we'll, but if you if you were on the shoreline and you see a house that actually has an elevator, guess what? We have information to talk to you about elevators. You see a house that's actually a log cabin, we have information about log cabins. You know, we have all those specialty type things that you may see every fifth blue moon, but we have it. It's not a matter of, you know, Mark, you know, do you have this information? There it is. Uh, we've been doing this and I've been collecting and, and putting together and supporting our, our members for over 25 years. That's why it's so large. It didn't start out that way. First time we started it, it was 150 pages, but trust me, it, it grew real fast and we've been just growing it ever since. And you'll always see it that there's always new information and new ways of doing different things. But RIAs are great. Uh, fires, uh, you'll become a uh, you'll become a a board up expert. You'll board up the first floor uh, because sometimes uh, real uh, that the local government says that you can't go in for 24 to 48 hours. So what you do is you you go in, you help them get the short term executive housing, and you and you board up their property, which you get paid for extra for that. And then you also let them know at that point in time that you'll see them the next day. And you'll actually sign them up as you know in your public gesture contract, and you'll get them all the money to take care of this and and stop all this nonsense that they have to go through. Um, and then uh, so you get you'll you'll get the fire before any other public gesture goes because they don't know how to do that. And also we'll show you how to get the apps and everything else so that you know uh, exactly what's available in your area, what's happening for, as far as fires and things like that. Um, uh, when you have a major disaster like a flood or, or storm, and then what happens is they, they send in the government with the Jeeps and all that kind of stuff, and they, only people that live there can get in. Well, as a public jester, you're going to be actually contacted by at least one or two people, and then you'll be able to, and then from that point on, they'll just open the gate and let you in, um, and you can do what you want when you're in there. Um, and it's a great way to tap into, and nobody else. Is going to be able to do that, um, but you will. Uh, or if you're dealing with a, a fire water restoration company, they'll open doors for you also. Yep. And I hope everybody enjoyed my talk. <laughs>